It is the totality that speaks. The words of the Guru are the words of the Veda. Veda is only heard from the Guru. So Guru means the totality. And if one is in the sense of Guru all the time, one is in the sense of total natural law and its total organizing power, and there is nothing greater than that. That's why Guru is completely natural <laughs> in our awareness. It's not a matter of anything, <laughs> anything that is from outside or anything. It's completely natural, it's simple, it's totality. It's a great, it's a great thing, it's a great thing. One knows it uh, in being that level of, uh, being that level of relationship. Na guru radhikam, there is nothing greater than guru, nothing greater than guru. And guru purnima is the full moon of the guru. Full one day of the year. In the Vedic calendar, each day is attributed to some devata, to some special creative intelligence, sun, moon, and all that, Shiva, Vishnu, all, enormous number of the uh, devatas, embodiments of the Kriya Shakti. Kriya Shakti is the power of action. Two things basically, there is silence and action. Silence and act activity. Infinite silence and infinite activity, and both in perfect accord with each other. Perfect silence, perfect dynamism, this is Brahm, this is totality. And Guru is totality. He has, in the Vedic literature, just with reference to what uh, Dr. John Hagelin just said, that it is, it is said, Tripada Syamritam Divi. That means three-fourths is Amrit. Amrit means eternal. Three-fourths is eternal, one-fourth is, is juggling around. <laughs> so three-fourths three is eternal. This is what makes us uh, stand on our own feet eternally, that we are embedded in the three-fourths of the... Hmm? Uh, you mark, Dr. Higlin said, Unmanifest, this unmanifest, this avyakta, unmanifest, is three-fourths, and manifest is one-fourth. Three-fourths is unmanifest, one-fourth is manifest. So the changes take place in the unmanifest. What continues in the field of flow? is three-fourths, three-fourths, three-fourths. So the dominant factor is three-fourths of totality. Little fluctuations come in this field of relative. That's why relative is just a matter of a concept. Reality belongs to the non-changing, eternity, absolute eternity, absolute, absolute eternity, absolute. So this whole thing is very real. <laughs> the other day of, uh, I talked about this, Samya, this absolute number, today was reference was made to the number, Absolute number is that 
which guides the equations of the Brahman consciousness, how life is lived in relativity even though saturated with absolute value. Absolute value means togetherness of silence and dynamism together. Together, dynamism and silence, unity, but some frail fluctuations of the relativity. There is a word in this in, in the Vedic literature, Jivan Mukti. Mukti means freedom. Jivan means living life. So living life is always in the relative. But living life in perfect freedom. How is it possible? It is possible because you live on the level of one-fourth and you continue to live on the level of three-fourths. So three-fourths eternity, one-fourth fluctuations, like that, like that, like that. It's a very beautiful thing, it's a very beautiful thing. And with these, our, with these our uh, universities, with these our uh, international universities, everywhere, these fundamental levels of, of mathematics and equations, huh? they are going to introduce the absolute number. And the absolute number in the, in the equation, theory of numbers, and then theory of language, theory of these alphabets, vowels and consonants. So numbering system, absolute, and the absolute of that is zero. And the language, absolute of language is uh, total, a uh, sound of totality. Everything is within this sound of totality. Ah. And what are those things within ah? This is Vedic language alphabets. Eh? Ah has within it e, u, vil, ri, e, i, o, o, am, aha. These are the seven syllables that are within A. The total is A. The example is, we hear the sound of a market from a kilometer. It is just one A, uh, hum. As we go nearer and nearer, within that sound, other sound begins to be heard. And when you go in the market, you are able to hear, hear many sounds that were making that one total sound. So, A ah is a sound of all the, of all the possible sounds. And all the basic possible sounds have been, have been summed up in terms of eight sounds. And these eight sounds come up from one silent sound, para. That now Dr. Hagelin counted para and para and all those. So para, that is transcendental field of consciousness, one holistic totality, unified field. And this in unified field, the, 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 the quantum word, Dr. Hagelin explained it so, so beautifully, so clearly it was made. Now, this quantum thing in the uh, field of consciousness is 
a frictionless flow. One thing is that you move forward, move forward. The other thing is you move backward, you move backward. But in this field of the transcendent, it's not a move in any one direction or two direction or one opposite direction, no. All directions at a time. It's a frictionless flow. Frictionless flow. That you go this way and you go this way also. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth. This mind is the instrument for that. <laughs> 